Hi, this is MXUX. In this presentation, I'm going to try to com contrast and compare the Tesla Tau, uh, the 25K Tesla, the details we have from Investor Day, with the Foxconn Bordstown Motors MIH project, which has not been identified yet but i am going to work with the the assumption that this is going to be project x and let's just call this a thought exercise at this point comparing the tesla tau to the uh mih project x now the tesla tau is a 25k tesla uh assumed to be i have a picture down of a concept two-door hatch, uh, hatchback. Um, the MIH Project X looks like a cube. It's a utilitarian, in my mind, appears to be a robo-taxi. Uh, so, we're going to assume, since the Project X is the most recently announced project by MIH, which is supposed to go into prototype this year and into production next year, um, we're going to assume that these are the two competing projects. And I just want to go over this, again, as a thought exercise, but this very well could come to fruition, to show you that, you know, Tesla is not as advanced as people assume it to be when you... and. LMX and uh, Foxconn and MIH are right up there. As I say continually, the main competitor of Tesla is Foxconn and the Foxconn conglomerate, LMX and MIH. Uh, I think they're, they're uh, competitive uh, projects. So I'm going to go over th some features. On the left side is Tesla. On the right side is MIH Foxconn LMX, so, so that's the MIH Project X, and on the left side is the Tesla Tau. Now, I've got some spelling errors here and some other things, but I'm just going to power through this. I don't care. Let's see here if we can uh, get going. Um, Tesla Tau, MIH Project X. So, Tesla made a big deal of the Ethernet wire harness. Uh, drive-by-wire and the Bluetooth and so forth. They said Class A subcompact, which is uh, below a compact car. Likely, they're going to have the digital privacy, which anonymizes, uh, makes anonymous all of the um, uh, data coming from the uh, car so again uh, tesla made a big deal of the ethernet harness the bluetooth um subcontact okay mih ethernet harness e e e e e a no problem subcompact it's going to be a subcompact mih it's going to be a three-seater a five-seater and a nine-seater and it's going to have the same digital privacy so um as you can see this is a total matchup as far as the technology everybody thinks uh, tesla invented this tech they did not invent this technology these concepts are out in the wild and tesla is applying them um anyway i think the main difference here and again uh the MIH Project X is going to be a modular vehicle. It's going to be a three or a five or a nine seat vehicle. So the point being, uh, they're going to have one model of Tesla Tau. They're going to have three models of Project X on the same platform. Now, as far as this being a three seater, the Project X, there has to be an airbag for the center seat. If not, it will be turned into a console for the U.S. market, and the world market will have the center seat. Um, 
let's just move on to the next box here. We'll employ cast body structure. Again, I had mentioned this before, Foxconn actually makes a Gigapress, which, at least one, which is in use for VW right now, making battery trays that hold uh, battery assemblies. Uh, the MIH platform also uses castings. Uh, front and rear, like Tesla presently, so uh, so likely uh, Project X will also have casting. So again, the, the cast body structure, and I think a lot of other uh, OEMs are implementing this as well, is nothing new to Foxconn. And it doesn't go to Ed Idra, at least for one style of Gigapress, because they manufacture. Foxconn Hon High manufactures a Gigapress. A, a gigapress so we have um, by wire controls now the tesla tau is going to have uh brake steer and gas by wire the model uh the project x also is going to have brake steer and gas by wire again uh, this is not new technology um you think tesla invented it they didn't uh, Tesla has invented a new AC pin wire motor. It's going to employ in this model. Uh, it's unknown what the drive system is going to be in the Project X. I am suspecting hub motors, which is also a new technology, which would have, uh, you know, two or three factor fewer parts than the AC motor deployed by Tesla. Uh, the Tesla Tau is intended for the world market. The uh, Project X also intended for the world market. Uh, OTA, info, uh, you know, over-the-air updates, infotainment, fleet stats, Project X, OTA, info, uh, infotainment, fleet stats, same thing. Okay? Now, uh, the Tesla Tau is going to have self-driving. That's on the left, the Tesla Tau. On the right, MIH Working Group on Self-Driving. You know, in China, they have a number of uh, self-driving services, car services. They're geofenced and mapped. Uh, MIH has an entire group that has been working and during uh, Technology Day, they went to private sessions on how they are handling uh, self-driving. Um, so, is it likely that the Project X will at least have the hardware for self-driving? Likely, will it have a, a comparable system to Tesla? We have to wait and see, but there's a very good chance that this could happen. Let me just say this about self-driving. Tesla's gone to a pure vision self-driving system for a reason. It's because the other sensor suites, you know, the LiDAR and radar and infrared, the sensors are too expensive to implement. And they drain too much battery power. This is why Tesla's gone to a pure vision-based system. MIH likely would go to a pure vision system as well, unless they develop a new sensor suite. But I, I, I do believe that MIH is absolutely going to have uh, a near comparable self-driving. 25K price target on the Tesla Tau. Again, you know, the 40K uh, uh, <laughs> Cybertruck doesn't exist anymore. So we're going to see on the 25K price target. But uh, the uh, MIH Project X, similar. Uh, same price target area. I'm going to go over price targets in another section of this presentation. Uh, Tesla has great depth in software. You know, their infotainment, their operating system. MIH, extreme depth in software as well. Uh, the MIH operating group uh, of companies that Jack Chang has put together, they've all been working together now for a couple of years. And you know that a 
electric vehicles are a lot like a cell phone, at least the operating interface. And certainly uh, Foxconn has a lot of experience developing cell phones. Tesla has 128,000 employees. So that's the total number of employees at Tesla. And I'm trying to get a, a, an idea of the size here. MIH, which is this consortium of tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers, has 2,500 member companies. Uh, to have the same number of employees, each MIH member would need 51 employees, which is highly likely. What I'm saying here is uh, brain power to brain power or employee to employee, MIH is a comparable organization. So I do not believe uh, Tesla has an advantage when you look at this raw size component. Um, Let's go uh, more deeply into this. The size of Tesla's engineering... I don't have a comma in that, uh, apostrophe in that. Tesla's engineering staff is not public. Okay? If each MH member had one engineer, it would be 2,500 engineers. Two, likely, would be 5,000. Three, it would be 7,500. If they had four engineers each that would be 10,000 engineers uh working on this project i i think that's pretty likely out of 51 employees to have 10 percent be engineers or even more than that if they had five let's say 10 percent uh of uh the uh, engineers i'm sorry i have a, a a slide error in that number four but if they had five engineers at each a company uh, that would be 70 7500 i think i have those numbers transposed anyway if they had 10 engineers at each company in mih that would be 25000 engineers as compared to 128 uh, so uh, about uh, one fifth of tesla if they had 20 engineers at each MIH member, that would be 50,000. Now, I've settled on a, on a figure here of half of the employees at each of these MIH companies are administrative and so forth, and uh, tech, uh, computer tech. Uh, I'm saying that the engineers in MIH uh, companies, the 2,500 companies, 25 engineers per MIH member, that's 62,500 engineers working on this program in the background. This MIH number is 49% of Tesla employees. So we're saying half of Tesla employees are engineers and half of MIH employees are engineers. This is a really long road to go down. What I'm saying here is, I do believe there's a comparable number of engineers addressing the problems at the MIH consortium as there are at Tesla. Okay? That is the point we're making here. Um, Tesla has a market cap of $620 billion. This is... This is uh, something you can look at. Uh, it boggled my mind. $620 billion, a 2.6x times the size of Foxconn. Foxconn's uh, market cap is $238 billion in U.S. dollars. So uh, Tesla's market cap is three times the size of Foxconn. And, you know, Foxconn is a giant company in its own right let alone with this mih consortium association but you can see the difference in market cap here they're buying the potential the future uh, discounted future cash flows of tesla and that's garnered a three times uh, valuation over foxconn 
Um, so that's a big difference there. I think this is the impotence for Foxconn, of course, getting into battery electric vehicles. And I'll go through the battery electric vehicle market, my analysis of it in a in a section that follows. Now, just moving on, Tesla makes chips. They make they're making a big deal about how they design their own chips. A lot of their chips on their boards are, uh, you know, generic chips, but uh, they also make and design their own uh, chips. I don't think they fab them. I probably send them out to TSMC. Foxconn also makes chips and screens and electronics and, and basically everything that uh, could go into an electric car could be made by Foxconn. Now, the MIH consortium is set up to supply the components that Foxconn does not make. So, by association, Foxconn is going to make everything that goes into these cars. But, uh, again, Tesla makes chips. Foxconn has been making IC chips forever. So that is uh, another equivalency. Um, of course, Tesla has more operational experience integrating these things and so forth, but still the same capability. Now, and just getting into the component level here, nearly every component of, of the uh, iPhone is made by Foxconn. People don't realize this. It's like 90% of the components. Um, some are supplied by third parties, but... So this is how Foxconn uh, does things. Tesla is a walled garden iOS. It's kind of like the iOS, the Apple operating system. MIH is open source. It is open. Um... It's like Android. And in one of my previous videos, I showed a chart of how the Apple walled garden has stagnated and the number of apps and other things that have been de developed for the Android system being an op with open APIs and open source it is so much greater. This is one of the powers that... Uh, uh, Foxconn is trying to capture uh, with the MIH having these all these varied income uh, varied inputs and uh, filtering them all down into uh, you know uh, a set of apps and components and stuff the idea being uh, what's that old saw uh, you know you have a, a giant jar full of beans at the county fair and you have to, everybody guesses what how many beans are in the jar and after you get enough, uh, you get a, all these people guessing, they, they usually get it right. And this is what MIH is counting on, having these varied sources, being able to pick and choose between these varied sources and the chance of them being right. Tesla is doing the same thing, although they have uh, a different system, but they do have a walled garden and they do have groupthink there, so we can compare those two. I like the MIH uh, model, although Tesla has produced great results. I think one of the reasons Tesla is such a walled garden and Lordstown Motors faced this when they had to buy frames for their trucks when they were first building them, no one would sell them to them because of the ICE uh, company's pressure on them. So they had to bring their uh, frame business in-house. This was a great expense to Lordstown Motors. Tesla, I'm sure, faced this same backlash when it first, first started. And also, a lot of these components weren't available on the market. So they had to institute a walled garden because, you know, they had to make this stuff themselves and uh, so forth. And other companies wouldn't sell to them. Now we have components available and so forth. So um, the open source model is uh, more doable. Now... Um, Again, I mentioned here the new uh, Tesla uh, DC motor. Again, unknown motor at this time for uh, this uh, MIH program. Uh, we think it's a hub motor. Now, the 4680 structural battery pack, um, the latest 
will not be used in this BEV. So uh, they mentioned that it's a 33680 so far. They're not, in, in other words, the 4680, at least at this point, is not going to be used in this new Tesla. Foxconn uh, now implemented battery to frame. So in this uh, Project X, they've eliminated the battery pack. The battery pack is part of the frame. I think this is exciting. So there's no pack. So they've gone from a structural pack to no pack. Also, this Project X is also going to be uh, able to swap batteries. So battery swap is going to be an uh, option with this vehicle, and that would address the lack of charging. I have a clip here, which I think I'm going to record separately and edit in here, um, where they mention on AutoLine, uh, talking about the... Foxconn battery to frame the new uh, the new concept and Foxconn is likely to use a cast frame and so there's going to be no battery pack this is new and this is a change in the way they build uh, BEVs just as uh, Fox uh, as Tesla is implementing a change in the way they build EVs I'm going to play this clip later and edit it in but I think this is very interesting. Uh, no 4680 structural battery pack. Now we're going to have in the Project X battery to frame, no pack or swappable battery, uh, which I think you know could be a plus for a robo taxi, a total robo taxi fleet. And, you know, in some in some uh, remote areas of a city or whatever, where charging wasn't available, the, to have the swap swapping ability, have the thing auto drive in and swap with, I think would be great. Uh, U.S. operations of Tesla, the IRA Act, and uh, you know, uh, U.S. operations at Foxconn, uh, LMX, the IRA Act. So they're both going to get the same tax credits and so forth. Uh, Tesla has six models of BEVs, including the Tau. Foxconn has six models, plus Project X, <laughs> okay, plus the Fisk Fisker Pair at 25K, plus the Lordstown Endurance. Uh, so, actually, Foxconn has a larger portfolio of products. I just want to mention that the latest word is that they are tooling up at the Lordstown plant um, for Fisker Pair production. They have started the tooling there. Foxconn has. So that is going to be a 25K competitor to Tesla as well. Again, to be built by uh, Foxconn. Now, the Fisker Pair is a consumer vehicle, not a fleet vehicle, though. Um, and the LMX Endurance at this point is designated as a fleet vehicle. Um, Tesla has 12 years ahead of ICE competitors, 10 years ahead of BEV competitors. So Tesla is generations ahead of other people. Now, Foxconn has no legacy ICE or BEV business. So they are starting with a clean sheet. They they had made every iPhone made. They are the largest electronics manufacturer on the planet. They are committed to pivot the corporation to the BEV market. And as I said, MIH was founded in 2020. So they've been at this for several years now. This has been working behind the scenes. So I guess the point I'm making here is you know, Foxconn is where Tesla was. <laughs> and Foxconn has a clean sheet to work with, and they're, they're uh, moving ahead uh, with their own uh, approach to business and their own approach to industrialization. And they're modeling it on uh, the cell phone segment. And 
you know, uh, in many ways, a battery electric vehicle is connected to a cell network. It is got an operating system like a cell phone, and it is like a cell phone on wheels. So I, I am confident that uh, you know they are going to apply um, some try uh, tried and true business model components to this battery electric manufacturing. I think Foxconn is a very interesting company and uh, you know you certainly have to take it seriously. I mean as I said in previous uh, videos um, I, you hear very little from Foxconn. If you don't follow the Asian press you, you may not hear anything but this is all going to come on the scene at one time. And it's just going to explode all of these activities. And this includes uh, Lordstown Motors. Although, uh, you know, Lordstown Motors is a high-risk investment. Uh, but this association, I think, and uh, as the CEO said, they are pivoting to this new program uh, with Foxconn. Uh, pivoting the focus. Uh, I think... Um, it's all very exciting. Now, this is the Tesla Tau picture we have. 25K passenger cart, proposed fleet vehicle covered by a tarp. This is the MIH uh, Project at X platform. I do believe uh, that's Jack Cheng there. I do believe the bottom half of that is one casting where the wheels are. I do believe it's going to have hub motors. Uh, I think that's a very simplified um, way to make a car. Again, battery tray is going to be cast into that lower casting. And uh, it looks like the body panels are going to be glued on the outside of that, possibly. And then the you know greenhouse superstructure there uh, is going to be made of another material. Who knows what? Perhaps... Uh, um, pressed uh, carbon fiber, stamped carbon fiber is one thing that may come to mind and so forth. But uh, as you can see, a totally different concept from Tesla. Uh, and that's the MIH. Now, let me just... Uh, right, now, uh, right now, Tesla has indicated that this will be a fleet vehicle, a robo-taxi, they didn't say it was going to be, you know, they're going to Osborne affect themselves if they put a 25K model out. And I have a, a piece coming out, I think it's going to be in this video, on the on my analysis of the BV market. But, um, uh, and a fleet vehicle at this price point makes perfect sense. Al, uh, Lord Sound Motors also says that this project... MIH project that they are developing will be a fleet vehicle as well, addressing a different segment than the light duty endurance pickup truck. Uh, so, by deduction, robo taxi, delivery taxi, delivery uh, bot, uh, small delivery. Uh, uh, van so forth and now they said they're not going to use the 4680 battery will the 4680 battery be perfected uh by the time production starts on this car and they're saying 20 uh i think 2025 um the pro uh project x the prototype is 23 production is 25 or 24 Will and Foxconn uh, is working on a solid state battery. Um, these battery configurations are confusing. The idea of a solid state battery is that it, it can charge faster, it is more energy dense. There are many multiple uh, uh, advantages to a solid state battery. Foxconn has been working on a battery, a solid state battery in the background. They say they're very close to launching it. I would add that in my understanding of the two technologies, the 4680 battery is 
is pretty close to a solid state battery, although it doesn't have the charging and the energy density uh, advantages as a pure solid state battery. A solid state battery is more like, um, um, view it as, a, as being made out of ceramic, okay? Um, uh, it doesn't have a, a wet state, you know, although some of them have gel in them and so forth. And I just watched the presentation on a uh, Peak Energy channel that I watch on YouTube. And a uh, professor from Oxford was on and she said that they, solid state batteries are here now. And they are, they're not in production yet. So we're going to see the big battery wars. Uh, if Foxconn can stick a solid state battery in this vehicle, that would be uh, really something. But I think if you read the tea leaves and look at what's going on in the background, that's their plan. And we never know. And I just want to show you, there's a close-up of the that MIH bottom section, which again, I believe is a casting. I mean, the top could be a casting as well. Could be stamped carbon fiber. We don't know. Um, and again, this Project X right now is envisioned as a world car made for the Asian market. I think uh, for it to meet uh, US crash standards and so forth, uh, it's going to have to be engineered a little differently if this is in fact and i am assuming this is the uh, project lordstown motors is working on or some derivation of this project uh i think uh you know one thing they can do is produce one model for the rest of the world and one model for north american market or they could produce what's called a world car which would work everywhere and that's the idea of homologation uh, but, uh, that's what I think we're going for here. This is speculation on my part. And that is the Project X. And that is a skeletal view of it. And again, with the hub motors, there's no drive. I mean, it's basically you're going to be a battery, which is part of the frame. Uh, so there isn't going to be a structural battery pack. There's going to be no battery pack. The battery is going to be part of the frame. Solid state battery with hub motors. That is going to reduce the electronics down to nothing in this car as far as the drivetrain goes. And this is an artist conception. This is a, uh, a vehicle where all the fenders are the same shape. The front and the back are the same shape. Um... And we have this little screen on there, which, having seen many Ubers hailed, I think having that little screen on the back, when you're calling, let's say you're calling a robo-taxi, and you're waiting to see which robo-taxi is yours, and you have that little screen on there, and, and it says, Hi Mary, or whatever, whoever's uh, called the taxi, I think that's genius pure genius that solves looking for license plate numbers that solves the confusion of uh, getting in a robo taxi i don't know if tesla is going to implement that but they have screens front and back on this car or at least they propose to great idea i think that's a really cute car i think it's a perfect robo taxi and then we go down this is the artist conception so far and based on that tarp covered item of the tesla tau this is a two two door uh hatchback aerodynamic hatchback certainly a much different looking vehicle and uh i don't know between the two i see a lot of people getting in these robo i think this is a lot easier to get in and out of <laughs> okay and uh this is a lot, looks a lot more like a Tesla. Looks a lot more like a consumer Tesla, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, so that's my uh, presentation on this. This is MXUX, and let me move on. I, I have other sections planned for this. Let's move on to the next section.